So if you're watching this video, that must mean that you're considering building a sleeping platform for your uh, fifth gen 4Runner and more specifically the two row version. Um, if you have a two row version like I do, when you lay the seats forward, it doesn't provide a completely level sleeping platform in the back of the 4Runner. There's about a three inch gap difference between the trunk portion and the seat portion. Um, that was one issue I ran into. Uh, another issue I had specifically for me was because of my height, um, I couldn't leave the, the seats in the back uh, installed. I had to remove them to give me the, the headroom that I needed. And so I wanted just to give a quick intro to my video, kind of explaining why I built this platform the way I did. Um, there's a couple things I've done different that most videos on YouTube don't have. Uh, like I said, because of the height, when I removed the seat, it left a it left a pretty significant void up front, and so I had to build a second platform to make that level uh, and give me a place to rest my head. Um, the third issue I have with my build is this is my wife's uh, daily driver, and so the build is not something that can be in there long term. It has to be something that's temporary. It's something that I can install and take out in a matter of 10 to 15 minutes and return the Forerunner back to its stock uh, riding configuration. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope there's something in it that you can take away and maybe implement it into your own build. And uh, thanks for watching. Okay guys, so this video is basically to show kind of a quick DIY build of a sleeping platform for a fifth gen Forerunner. Um, the problem I had was one, there is about a three inch difference between the trunk of the forerunner and then when the seats lay down flat. So if you just try to sleep in here like this, you couldn't do it. It's, it'd be too uncomfortable on your back right here. Um, the second problem I had personally is I'm about six foot two. And so if I tried to lay flat with just the seats folded forward, like you see right here on the left side, uh, the distance just isn't long enough. Uh, my feet would basically be hitting the, the door of the forerunner. So on the 60-40 back seat, I took the 60 side, the seat that folds forward, I took that out. And so now what I'm gonna do is build a little platform right here to go ahead and make this completely level. Uh, we'll go ahead and end off the platform flush with the center console here. That way the seat can still come back to a comfortable ride position. Uh, this is mine and my wife's daily driver, so I can't make it a full-time camping rig like I would like to. There's lots of videos on YouTube just kind of showing how this works. What you do is fold your seat forward and you take these caps off right here. That exposes this bolt. Uh, it's two per seat and all it is is a 14 millimeter bolt. I'm gonna pull these out real quick and uh, show you more from there. So part of the problem is with me is I am about six foot two. And so when it's just this seat folded forward, it doesn't give you quite enough room. Uh, I've measured it, it's about six foot even. So when you take this out, it should give you about four extra inches of headroom for uh, people who are taller. So that's why I'm actually taking the seats out rather than just folding them up and leaving them that way. Uh, my goal is for when it's just me, maybe put a twin mattress in here give me a little extra room for uh, storing stuff still. Uh, when it's me and my wife both camping in it, we'll probably try to figure out how to build a platform to fit maybe a full size mattress. Uh, but for now, I think I'm just gonna have this set up for just me. This right, seat comes out. All right, so you can see now, I've got the other seat still left in, folded forward. How much more room it gives you headroom wise. Uh, the plan is, is push the seat forward for me give me i'm hoping to get about six foot four uh to give me enough room to lay down flat and stretch out okay guys so for those of you who are curious uh, i know a lot of the youtube videos i watch on these platforms they don't show you this measurement but from the door to the center console here where the where the air conditioning comes out looking at about 76 inches so this is giving me enough room to lay in here uh, completely stretch down and stay comfortable uh, if you come to the seat if you do fold it forward you can get about 82 83 inches but that's not with the seat at a comfortable uh, ride position um, that's kind of how i sit it sit in my seat in the driver's seat comfortably when i'm driving and it's basically even with the air conditioner here uh, if it's a shorter person in the passenger seat you can leave it scooted forward a little bit however I'm going to make a platform 
that uh, comes up level with the seat here and then stops short enough to where the seat can still be reclined back to a comfortable riding position. Here's another measurement that you don't see on too many other videos and it's from the floor to the seat once it's laid down. All right, looking at about 11 and a half. Now the final measurements that most of you will use if you do the same style of platform is going to be the distance and the width of your platform inside the wheel wheels. That's going to be 43 inches, your length from the back of the seat to the back of the door there will be 41 inches. Uh, and if you do the carpet route like I'm going to do, once you wrap that carpet around that wood, it's really going to fit snug inside those wheel wells. And uh, it'll also help just kind of blend in with this black interior of the Forerunner. So I'm going to get to building the platform. I'll uh, take pictures and videos of that and show you. And then I'm also going to provide a little sketch of all the dimensions just so uh, something you can look back on rather than having to go through the entire video and get those dimensions. All right, guys, so we're starting the building process. Uh, I've got a full sheet of three quarter inch plywood. Uh, it does have a smooth side on one side. Went ahead and marked 41 inches and we'll take saw, cut the 41 inches, and then we'll measure the width at 43 inches and we'll cut that and then uh, we'll put the braces on it and carpet and get it installed in the forerunner all right guys so what i'm doing now is i'm cutting out the little platform for where my head's gonna be this is gonna go right behind the passenger seat um, i'm gonna use a circular saw and then just a level as a straight edge for my guide to help me stay on track the dimensions are right here Sorry for the shadow. So just think passenger front, front passenger seats right here. And then this little cutout is for where the center console where the AC comes out. Uh, there's the dimensions if any of y'all wanna try to copy this. All right, I've got the piece cut out. Like I said, it's going right here behind the passenger seat. Um, you can tell, tell where I cut out the notch to fit around the center console. It is a little tight. I'm gonna do some trimming and some sanding. And I think it'll fit. Alrighty, so I ended up taking off half an inch on the width and then on the length, took off about a quarter of an inch, gave it a good sanding. And as you can see, it uh, fits pretty well up in there. Next thing to do now is gonna be build some legs to support it. And then we'll carpet this and then the, the back leveling platform. All right, with both platforms in, and the level touching, there is not, but maybe a half inch difference. My finger, it's starting, it's touching the level there. Um, so pretty flat overall. Once you throw a mattress or any type of pad down, there's you're not gonna be able to feel any of the any of the humps. Uh, much better than before. Only thing left to do now is get carpet on both platforms, and this will be done. All right, guys, so we're on the final step here, and that's applying carpet to the base. Uh, I went to Home Depot, and I got this indoor-outdoor carpet. Uh, it's like five bucks a square foot. It comes six foot wide, and then you get it cut to the length that you need. I went ahead and did eight foot long just to give me plenty of extra material to do both the main uh, support in the back and then the, the small base for the head behind the uh, passenger seat up front. Um, used a straight edge and a razor knife to make the cuts. I did four and a quarter inches on each side of overlay to give room to fold it over on the sides. So I've got it cut. I'm gonna flip this board upside down and then apply some, just some spray adhesive to help it stick. And then uh, we'll staple it down and uh, I'll show you the final results next. All right, got the carpet on, got the platform installed. Um, I will say if you think about doing this, you might want to go to half inch plywood. I did three quarter and there's a little bit of a gap. It's about maybe half an inch higher than what the seats are, but it's, I mean, it's nothing you're going to feel. You can lay in it without a mattress and it's still pretty comfortable. So once you put a mattress down or a decent sized sleeping pad, you're not going to feel it. So for those of you interested in doing maybe a small platform for your head, this piece goes 
right behind the front passenger seat, which would be right here where the cutout is. That's where the center console is and the AC vents for the rear of the 4Runner. Uh, the dimensions on this, this dimensions here, eight and a half. As the curve starts to go, it gets a little wider. So that distance eight and three quarters. The full length of it is 31 and a half inches. The length or the width here is 10 and a half inches. And then from this corner to the curve, 22 inches. For the legs, I used two by six in this corner, a two by six here at the front, which goes right next to the passenger seat. And then I screwed two two by fours together to make a four by four. And this part goes right in the center of the forerunner where the hump is in the back seat. This leg is eight and three quarter inches long. The front two by six is 11 and a half. And the back right corner two by six is 10 and three quarter inches. All right, so I'm about to carpet the uh, the head platform. Uh, like I said earlier, guys, I bought this carpet. Uh, I got eight foot of it. So when you buy it at Home Depot, it's laying up on the shelf like this. It's six foot wide. And then you just buy whatever length you want. I did eight foot just so I knew I was going to have plenty uh, I knew I wanted to do the headrest, maybe all the legs. So I wanted to make sure I had plenty. But guys, if you're trying to do this as cheap as possible, just get five foot. Um, this cutout here, of course, was the main platform. And then I'm just going to use the little tag here for the rest. But uh, five foot by six foot, we'll get these two pieces done just to save you guys a little money. All right, so I've got them all installed. All the carpet on them. It's pretty flat overall uh, like i was saying earlier there is and it might be half inch um lit now with the three quarter inch plywood so i'm thinking about maybe going and getting i don't know a half inch piece of plywood and uh filling this gap i have some carpet left over so put that in and it'd look like one solid piece uh let me know what you guys think so to wrap this video up guys i thought i'd show what the forerunner looks like with some gear in it. I've uh, got a one night camping trip coming up. So loaded up my camper gear, taking a couple soft shell coolers with me. Got my hiking boots, got a wool, wool blanket here. All my smaller camping gears in this big backpack. Uh, got my warmer weather sleeping bag there. All I'm laying on right now, guys, is foldable blanket and then one of these foldable insulated camping mats. Uh, I'm still undecided on what I want to do long term uh, for the mattress. There's several brands online of the self-inflating uh, memory foam mattresses that are kind of geared to car camping. If any of you have one of those uh, and you've had good luck of a uh, specific brand, please let me know below. Um, stopped at Harbor Freight. Got a couple of little pop-up lanterns here. These just run on AA batteries. I figured that'd be a better option than the uh interior lights of the forerunner draining the battery down uh exterior lighting uh, i got two of these lights as well all they are is just a magnetic led light that runs on AA batteries came from harbor freight um i'm gonna take the stock plastic forerunner mat with me uh, set it on the ground just like this have a campsite and then kick my shoes off then I don't have to worry about tracking in dirt into the forerunner. All right, guys. So that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Maybe you're building your own uh, forerunner and you can take take some of the things I did and use them and implement it in your own camping rig. Uh, this is the first video I'm putting on YouTube. So I know there's plenty I need to work on. But if any of you guys have some advice or some tips, please feel free to share those. Uh, Y'all stay safe. And uh, thanks for watching.